Uh, we're on right now, by the way, uh, all the way from Santa Monica, I believe, with Patrick and George Garcia behind the South African horror film Hell Trip. Hello. Hi, hey, hey. hi. Are you doing well? Yeah, we're doing well. Yes, thank you. Okay, cool. That is most magnificent. I'm talking to people on the other side of the planet right now uh, about your film, Hell Trip. I could do a bit of an IMDb synopsis for, for, for people, but would, would you like to do the honours and explain what the film's actually about? Sure. Um, do you want to take it? Yeah, sure. Okay, well, uh, the, it's basically set in deepest, darkest, darkest Africa, and a group of tourists from the States uh, arrive. Uh, they're on, obviously, like a short, uh, short vacation break. And then, obviously, all things start to go wrong. <laughs> okay. It, like, things slowly start to, to go out of order there. Yeah, um, you, you filmed it. You filmed Deepest Darkest Af Africa in Sanin, I believe. That's correct, yes. And uh, parts of Belfast as well. Okay. That's, that's pretty cool. It does look absolutely gorgeous from the trailer footage. It looks a bit like Vietnam films before everything starts to turn on fire. Um, <laughs> did, 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 did you pick the look? Did you pick the the location just so that you could go on a like a cool vacation to a game reserve and enjoy yourselves? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we we thought you know what don't the Americans have uh, in America? We thought why not go and shoot in beautiful Africa. Uh, you know, lots of wildlife, uh, beautiful locations. Um, it's just a, a very different kind of aesthetic uh, to to what the the, the normal the norm, yeah, you know, the normal Hollywood movies are. Do you, do you use that wildlife in order to coax some some fear out of it, or is it or, or is the, the the villain a proper like because there's a, there's a monster in it or some <laughs> kind of antagonist, the real one? Right. Well, I guess you have to go watch the movie, right? <laughs> okay. So, 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 we don't want to so, get away too much, but but yeah, the, the the animals are definitely part of to add to the thrill factor and, and the scare factor. So you're not but if it doesn't revolve around them, no, not specifically. Yeah. Okay, no, do, we're not confirming whether or not somebody gets eaten by a lion. Basically, <laughs> we can neither confirm or deny that. <laughs> okay, you you made the film together. Um, you you co-wrote and co-produced it, but then Patrick, you went off and directed it on your own. What was the the How did you come to that decision? Uh, Ching Chong Cha. No. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. uh, it was, uh, I don't know. It was just... Well, the original idea was to actually direct together, um, but then I had a few other commitments, unfortunately. So, um, oh, yeah. Shane Patrick kind of got the, the whole, <laughs> the heat behind him on that one, Shane. Oh, yeah. So, it's because... a great job, though. Because you know, you know, fraternal um, filmmaking duos apparently do work, according to his history. Anyway, um, does does working with your sibling? Because I I can't imagine working with my sibling on anything. But but apparently, it works in movies. How how does it make the filmmaking process better? I think we we share a, a singular mind with very different points of view. So and we're quite it, well balanced on quite a lot. Yeah, of issues. I mean, we 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 strengthen each other's um, cause in in both from a script point of view, from a from a location point of view, from from every aesthetic uh, in terms of the movie. So yeah, I think I think we complement each other. Yeah, it's quite a nice balance, I think. Okay, that 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 is that's cool. You you obviously wouldn't have filmed this with quite the same budget as perhaps the Russo brothers would have had. Though was was it interesting working under budget constraints? Did, did how did that alter the filmmaking process? Having a, a smaller budget yes. uh, doesn't necessarily mean. Uh, being limited, one can use those constraints in itself to become more resourceful. Um, so, you know, I think uh, it just it just made us figure out how we were going to execute this in the best possible way without wasting or wastage, you know. Yeah, it just made us a lot smarter. We, in other words, we had to make a lot more of, of the locations, a lot more of the acting, a lot more of the story, uh, you know, build a lot more in, in terms of thrills, you know, as opposed to just having big action sequences. So I think it actually helped, to, if anything, to actually highlight the movie even more. Okay, uh, to, to focus things down and provide provide like a clear angle on what you were trying to do right. there. Um, you you have you you have this antagonist, this mysterious person that appears at the end of the trailer. You, you must have had like some designs from on paper beforehand. How how when you you're working under such constraints, do you take like like a brilliant, ambitious design for this imposing villain and then put it on screen in a way that really works for people? Well, we run a visual effects company as well, which uh, specializes in being creative. You know, we were always oh, yeah. looking at design, creating new uh, villains. And we thought, you know, me and George thought, why not create an iconic villain where, um, you know, in the likes of a Wes Craven or a John Carpenter, uh, because they had it right. You know, they had the formula right back in the 80s and 90s of creating an iconic villain that, that can be used in sequels and prequels mm. to, this and, day, yeah. uh, to this day. So, you know, that's sort of what 
what our primary objective was when we initiated this. So you want people to, to see this film and remember your villain for, for all time, basically. And get like, do you have any plans for a sequel then? If, if you want to start like a, fra- like a Mike Myers style franchise? Oh, well, look, it's definitely something that crossed our mind. Um, it's definitely something that we want to yeah. take forward. But obviously, it's going to depend a lot on, the on, films, on certain factors. Yeah. yeah. The you, film success is one of those factors. Yeah, definitely. Yes. You did some advertising for it uh, out at Comic-Con Africa, right? Yeah, we screened at Comic Con. Uh, so Joburg released its premiere there. Uh, Comic Con had a massive reception. Uh, we we literally could not stack enough chairs in that room. We had to turn <laughs> some people away because there was just not enough space. Mm. Uh, but it was a beautiful reception. That was, yeah, it was and really then, and last week we did the Cape Town one. So we were at the Horror Fest. Uh, so Cape Town got to see it there as well. Uh, also, a very nice reception for the movie. So it's good to see. So, so you, you do you reckon these things they're, they're getting bigger? The, the expos like Comic Con Africa, they're, they're doing a lot to highlight South African talent. Absolutely, no, absolutely. I think it's a great yeah. platform for that. Okay, and the, the the industry as a whole, do you see that getting much bigger? Because there are small countries out there like New Zealand that keep pumping out these big name directors. Do you see South Africa starting to be a, become a place that gets international recognition more often than just the month that Neil Baumkamp re- releases a new film? <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely see a growth. Uh, 100%. Yeah. I really do. I think there's a lot of great local talent here, definitely. Um, and I just think it just needs a bit more exposure. I think once the world gets to see what we are capable of, you know, a lot of people in this country are going to go a lot further. Well, when are people going to be able to see your new film, Hell Trip? Well, I think it comes down to, you know, uh, speaking to, uh, we're currently talking to local distributors. So, um, you know, it'll all come down to what kind of packages and offers that, that we we can negotiate with. Um, it's 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 a tough industry from uh, from you know the local perspective, um, but you know I think we're doing well. I think um, we'll we'll hopefully give you a, a direct timeline on yeah, that. Yeah, look, we're hoping for hopefully next year. Um, you know, as soon as hopefully March, April. Yeah, uh, that would be great release date. But obviously, like Patrick was saying, it's going to depend a lot on the distributor, uh, going whether we're going theatrical with it or whatever the case might be. Do you have any ambitions for what's next already? Are you already thinking about what you're going to do for your next project in the meantime? We're actually shooting a movie now in January. It's more of a sci-fi, science fiction film. Um, We've also got one in uh, post-production at the moment, which we shot at the beginning of the year, called The Last Sacrament. Um, So we're we're very busy. Uh, We're quite quite packed at the moment. Um, So, yeah, we expect to hear from us uh, for a very long time. (laughs) You're 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 an incredibly dynamic fraternal duo, which is saying a lot, given that that category is kind of packed. Uh, Just really quickly, before I I let you go, um, Mike Myers versus Freddy Krueger versus your villain, your mysterious villain from the end of the trailer for this film. Who do you think will win? Well, it's like saying Batman versus Iron Man, you know. Uh, well, you've got your favourites, yeah, I guess. But uh, I'd like to think we'd stack up quite well. Yeah, I, I, think, I think he could uh, could deliver some blows. Yeah, okay, that, that is good. Backing your own team. Thank you very much, Patrick and uh, George Garcia, for making the film and for talking to us about Hell Trip. Well, thank you so thank much you. for the opportunity. Thank you for thank the you. opportunity.